welcome back my dear students so we were discussing about bounded linear operators on an arbitrary dimensional normed spaces now let's look into bounded linear operators or generally linear operators defined on finite dimensional normed spaces because in previous cases also in general normed spaces there are some properties which can be simplified or which can have a much simpler version in the case of finite dimensional normed spaces so there should have a property which relates to boundedness in finite dimension normed space so which is what we are going to discuss so the theorem is if a normed space x is finite dimensional if a normed space x is finite dimensional then every linear operator on x is bounded every linear operator on x is bounded so we have defined linear operators bounded linear operators in the case of arbitrary dimensional normed spaces but this theorem states that if you define any linear operators on a finite dimensional normed space it should always be bounded so we have to prove that every linear operator which is defined on a finite dimensional normed space is actually bounded which means that it satisfies the condition of boundedness so let's move on to the proof so given that x is finite dimensional so consider dimension of x is equal to n so which implies x has a basis consisting of n elements let e1 e2 etc e and b a basis of of our finite dimension normed space x and every element in x can be written as a linear combination of the elements of e1 e2 etc e n so for any small x belongs to capital x we have we have x is equal to alpha 1 e1 plus alpha 2 e2 plus etc plus alpha m e n or which is equal to summation i is equal to 1 to n alpha i e n by the properties of basis now in order to establish the boundedness we have to find the norm of tx so norm of tx should be equal to norm of t of this is x is summation i is equal to 1 to n alpha i a so number summation i is equal to 1 to n alpha i e a since t is actually linear t of this summation can be written as sum of t so it can be written as summation i is equal to 1 to n t of alpha i e a by the basic properties of norm since t is linear also this can also be splitted as 
norm of summation i is equal to 1 to n alpha i t of e i this also because t is linear now now we use the basic properties of norm and this can be written as written as uh, summation i is equal to 1 to n norm of alpha i t of e i because norm satisfies the triangle inequality so since norm of x plus y less than or equal to norm x plus norm y we can split up this whole thing this actually finite sum i varies from 1 to n you can also do that this uh, he, uh, here as well summation i is equal to 1 to n t of alpha ea can be splitted into this and then use the second linearity property after that so you can do in both cases both ways okay so this can be written out this is actually less than or equal to summation i is equal to 1 to n norm of alpha i t of ea by n4 n4 of no. Now, this can be written as this is equal to summation i is equal to 1 to n modulus of alpha i into norm t of e i by n3. Since even e to etc. e n are elements in capital X, we consider norm of t e1 norm of t e2 etc norm of t e n this is actually a finite collection of numbers and we take the maximum of this set this is actually a finite collection of numbers so it has a maximum that maximum should be an element of this set itself let's consider the maximum of this set to be capital K so norm of Tx we have written as it should be less than or equal to summation i is equal to 1 to n modulus of alpha i into norm Tea and each of norm of Tea should be less than or equal to K because k is the maximum of this element so instead of all this norm of tea you substitute k so this is actually less than or equal to summation i is equal to 1 to n modulus of alpha i times k so if you rewrite the whole thing you get norm of Tx should be less than or equal to k into summation i is equal to 1 to n modulus of alpha i. This is what we obtain. Let's call this as equation number 1. But we have another result which is used in the case of finite dimensional normed spaces by lemma. 2.4.1 if x1 is to etc xn are linearly independent set x1 is to etc xn is linearly independent set then norm of alpha i alpha 1 x1 plus alpha 2 x2 plus etc alpha n xn is greater than or equal to c into summation i is equal to 1 to n modulus of alpha i we have already established this result since e1 e2 etc e n is a basis e1 e2 etc e n is linearly independent so e1 e2 etc e n is linearly independent and so by using this lemma 
our space is also finite dimensional by using this lemma you can write norm of alpha 1 e1 plus etc alpha n en is actually greater than or equal to some constant c into summation i is equal to 1 to n modulus of alpha n. And also alpha 1 e1 plus x alpha 2 e2 plus etc alpha n en is considered to be as x. So this is actually equal to norm of x. So from this we can write as norm x is actually greater than or equal to c into summation i is equal to 1 to n modulus of alpha i or if you reverse the inequality we can rewrite the right hand side onto the left hand side and left hand side onto the right hand side that is c into summation i is equal to 1 to n modulus of alpha i is actually less than or equal to norm x okay so from this we can write summation i is equal to 1 to n modulus of alpha i is less than or equal to 1 by c into norm x equation number 2 we have already equation number 1 by equation number 1 we have norm of tx is less than or equal to some k into summation i is equal to 1 to n modulus of alpha i and by equation number 2 summation i is equal to 1 to n modulus of alpha i is less than or equal to 1 by c into norm x so this is actually less than or equal to k into 1 by c into norm x ok by 2 so norm tx is actually less than or equal to k by c can be considered as capital C c into norm x where capital C is equal to k by c and k is the maximum of t e1 norm of t e1 etc norm of t e n so we have taken an arbitrary linear transformation t on the finite dimensional normed space and an arbitrary x we have established that norm of tx is actually less than or equal to some constant c into norm x so which implies that our t is actually linear so t is actually bounded t is also so if you are given with a finite dimensional normed space and any given linear operators then that linear operator is always bounded so there's no point in defining a bounded linear operator in the case of finite dimensional normed space because every linear operator is actually bounded okay so this is what we have established so it's easy to establish so first we consider that our space is of dimension n so we take a basis and we write every element can be written as the linear combination of the basis elements and we take an arbitrary linear transformation t on our space x and t of x can be written as using basis and apply the linearity property and apply the property of norm and use the fact that the norm of t1 t e1 t2 etc t in is actually maximum can be considered as a number k then use that fact found this equation and next use this lemma lemma 2.4.1 which is used on a finite dimensional normed space and a linearly dependent set on that normed space so use that and we establish another result combining these two equation number one and two we establish that i was linear operator t is actually bounded now before getting on to further details we have already told you that I have already told you the main application of study this bounded 
operators is the fact that it has some special characteristics in the case of continuous operators. So that's why we define bounded linear operators in general as well. Continuity can be easily established using boundedness of an operator. It's a special, it's it only works in the case of in the case of a linear operator defined on a normed space. This type of relation, continuity related to boundedness, which only works in the case of finite, not finite, uh, bounded linear operators defined on a normed spaces. Okay, so let's discuss before further going to that result, let's discuss about the continuity of an operator. Okay, so continuous operators, continuity. So given two normed spaces x comma y and t from dt to y be an operator which need not be linear in general, okay, where dt is a subset of capital X, then t is said to be is said to be continuous continuous at an x naught belongs to domain t is continuous at a particular point x naught if for every epsilon greater than zero there exists a delta such that such that norm of tx minus tx naught is less than epsilon for all x belongs to d of t satisfying satisfying norm of x minus x naught less than delta okay so which means that for every x which belongs to some neighborhood of x naught its image t of x should belongs to some neighborhood of t of x naught this this norm is actually the norm which is defined on capital y this norm is actually the norm which is defined on capital x so this is the definition of a continuous function i think which we already know that so we only use instead of f we only use t if the function is continuous at a point x if the function is continuous at a all points in the domain then the function is said to be continuous function if t is continuous at all x naught belongs to d of t then t is called then t is called a continuous function if the function is continuous at all points in the domain then the function is called a continuous function so this is the basic proper basic definition of continuous continuity of a function okay and in our case it has a specific relation with regards to boundedness even though these two properties looks like an entirely different things but in the case of normed spaces this continuity and boundedness are actually equivalent conditions so which means that a function is said to be a linear operator defined on a normed space is said to be continuous if and only if it is bounded that's the thing which we want to prove I think I will prove that in the next video. So I hope you understood. Thank you.